Hi everyone, I am Suiz Mai right here and welcome to another free mobile repairing tutorial video where you will learn how to fix touchscreen problems on an LCD backlight touchscreen circuit. Keep in mind, I said LCD backlight touchscreen circuit, which means this circuit that we will study right here will be different from an AMOLED touchscreen circuit. So why are we talking about right here? You know, this type of phones that you will receive a phone, touch screen problem, the, the screen is not responding, no cracks, or maybe you even change the screen, but still the screen is not responding. So this video will teach you how you can do advanced troubleshooting and solve those type of fault step by step. I normally give all these type of lessons in my professional level course, but because you're not able to get it right now, or maybe you are not able, you don't know about it, doesn't mean that you should not have a glimpse that you can be able to solve those type of fault if you put in your to learn a lot, to learn advanced troubleshooting and all that. So I'm totally giving this for free and you can check my courses later after watching the video in the video description or on my bio if you are watching this on TikTok. Okay, so let's get into the video. I'm going to first zoom out the PCB so that you will see that we actually have a, a mobile PCB here. Okay, great. As you can see, we have our mobile PCB here. Let's say this phone, we receive this phone to repair. The touch screen is not working. We replace the touch screen with a new one, but still the touch screen is not working. What do we have to do? When we change the screen, it's not working. From there, we know that it's a hardware problem. We need to get into the PCB to be able to find and solve the fault. So how do we do that? Thanks to the PCB guideline that I've been using right here. I have my own schematic right here. You can do this with any schematic that gives you access to, to guidelines. So you can easily learn this from the guideline and uh, you can learn it more detailedly with schematic diagrams. But that will be complicated if I use the schematic diagram here. But in my courses, you learn all that. So if we receive this phone with touch screen problem, first we need to open the phone and we have to locate the screen connector. So it depends if the phone uh, touch screen connector is merged with the screen connector or it has an independent connector, touch screen connector. As you can see this one, the, the touch screen is merged with the screen connector right here. Which means that all you have to do, you have to locate the touch screen in the PCB guideline and you will have all, all these lines showing you that these lines here are the ones that are controlling the touch screen. I know a lot of you guys have been seeing this on a schematic diagram, but you don't know what all these names, all these lines actually mean or how you can test these lines. Or you just know that, okay, you need to test the diode reading because I, I have talked about diode reading in my uh, videos a lot of times but how can you actually test all these lines for you to test all these lines you need to know the functions of this line you need to know that these lines don't need to have a diode reading only but they need a power supply so in an lcd touch screen circuit of mobile phones what we do have we have the touch screen signal lines which you can see named as the SPI buses or the I2C buses. In some cases, you will see it's SDA or SCL. But in most cases, you will see the uh, uh, SPI bus, you will see I2C buses, or you will see TSP. So these are the, the, the readings, these are the, the, the keywords that you will use if in case you are using schematic diagram. As you can see, we have the SPI bus, we have the SPI buses right here. In some schematic diagram guidelines, you will see I2C buses, or you will see TSP, or you will see SDA or SCL. So keep that in mind. That's the first thing that you need to understand when you are looking for the CQ. So now that we know that these lines are the ones that are controlling the touch screen, let's say we are doing actual troubleshooting to solve touch screen problem in this mobile phone. First, we need to look for the power supply of the touch screen and the power supply of LCD backlight touch screen circuits, you will, you will always get one power supply which is 1.8 volt. 
this power supply that is 1.8 volt as you can see this red line is the power supply and it's coming directly from the power manager ic in some cases it will pass through a transistor before it gets here but in most cases let's just find where the red the, the, the power supply of this touch screen is coming from. Okay, so you can see we have the red line here. And as you can see, it's coming directly from the power manager IC. Which means if we are doing the actual troubleshooting here, we need to switch on this mobile phone. Once we switch on the mobile phone, because this PMU power supply, it means when you switch on the mobile phone and the mobile phone, actually boots up you are supposed to get this 1.8 volt so if you switch on the mobile phone and you test you don't see the 1.8 volt it means that you have to revolve the power ic and in rare cases the power ic will be damaged the section that is supplying the power ic with the 1.8 volt will be damaged which means that you will have to change the power ic but in most cases you will have to revolve the power ic Another way to, to solve this without having to revolve the power IC, if you haven't seen the power supply, is to check if there is any open circuit between, you can see that the 1.8 volt is the power IC, it connects to this inductor and this capacitor, and from there, it goes to the touch screen connector. So if there is any open circuit between this capacitor or this core with the touch screen circuit, all you have to do is check that, that, that uh, open circuit, if it's there, all you have to do link a cable from here jumper a cable from here from this uh, capacitor that you see right here you will jump at the 5 volt and all you have to do you can just use your professional level tools do micro soldering here you can see we have a clear clear line here you can just create this place jump at a cable here so you can see this is the line of the power supply so that's for the power supply we are done with the power supply section how you can find the power supply right okay apart from the power supply which is not even the most complicated thing to check when you are troubleshooting touch screen problem keep in mind the touch screen signal will have a clock signal a reset signal and an interruption signal and an interruption signal you need to keep that in mind and all these three signals you have to find and test them if they are available and all these signals will be in the PCB guideline or in the schematic diagram. In the schematic diagram, you will have better details how everything is being connected from the block diagram, in which I have the my own custom block diagrams in my professional level course. If you need the course, so in this circuit that we are looking at, you can see we have the SPI bus, we have the SPI bus CLK. So this SPI bus CLK is the clock signal of this touch screen secure that's one of the most important lines that i mentioned we have the the cp the the ctp reset which is the reset signal of the touch screen secret another important line we are going to go deep shortly and we have the the ctp int which is the interruption line of the touch screen secure so the clock signal the reset signal and the interruption line need to have a 1.8 volt when the toy screen is connected when the toy screen is connected as you can see that will be complicated and kind of boring to test right so there is another easy way to check this because these lines are always coming from the cpu which means in most cases the problem will be open circuit in the cpu you understand a lot of my uh, online students have been able to solve this i'm told i'm not talking about me because i've solved this type of faults a lot of time i know exactly where the trouble should be to solve but a lot of my online students have been able to solve this type of fault because when they message me saying they're trying to troubleshoot and they're stuck all i'd say you take this Test the reset signal that I'm reading it's not available check the reset check the clock signal check the interruption signal when you don't see any dial reading what comes to your mind there is an open circuit in the cpu and revolving the cpu solve the problem 100 percent so those are not the only things that you will have to check the dial readings 
we have the SPI buses, which are the toys transmission lines. We have the, the other SPI buses. Any line that is different from the interruption line, reset signal, at the clock signal, those are the data lines, the touch screen data lines that transmit. Is it transmit or trans transmit? Whatever. That transmit the touch when you click on your screen, it communicates the touch, the touch of your hand with the CPU through the SPI buses, the ITC buses or the TSP buses data lines, like I just mentioned. So let's find where the SPI buses lines are going through. So like I said, these lines, they need to have a diode reading. They need power supplies to be able to function. The reset signal, clock signal, needs to have 1.8 volt when the, the toy screen is connected and the phone is powered up. When you click on the, 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 the toy screen, the transmission, the toy transmission, is being sent through the SPI buses data lines, which you can see the SPI buses CS, SPI buses DI, and all that stuff. So let's uh, see where these lines are actually coming from. We first checked the power supply, and you clearly saw that that was coming from the the power manager IC. Let me show you that this is actually coming from the CPU, and most of these touchscreen problems, if it's not an open circuit around the touchscreen connector. It will be an open circuit in the CPU. So we are going to look at the lines. As you can see, we are following the lines. And uh, so if you come right here, you will see that we have our CPU right here, very smooth and very clear. You will see that these lines are connected to the CPU, and from the CPU, they go directly to the touchscreen circuit. You understand? They go directly to the touchscreen circuit, which means that there can easily be an open circuit between this line and you can easily solve that because there are no complicated connections in the pcb once you have to do you have to find the cpu when you have tested the diode reading and when you see the cpu all you have to do revolve the cpu and the power supplies of the signal lines like the the reset signal the interruption signal and the clock signal if you don't get if you get the dial reading and you don't get the power supply of those lines when you are connecting the screen, like I said, and the phone is on, if you don't get the power supply of those lines, you have to reboot the power IC still. Even though there is no connection, you don't see any clear connection between the, the, the CPU, the CPU, the, the touch screen lines of the CPU and the power IC, even though you don't see any power supply connecting it the cpu and the power ic there is a line when you use the schematic diagram like i said so you are you have learned everything here but there is still a lot to learn but you have learned the, the most of the things that you got most of the methods that you can use to do real life troubleshooting in a mobile pcb where well, i'm seeing is my right here and this will be our lesson for today you can check my courses and get my courses right now with a 45 percent discount so it's your time to get it before it goes back to its standard price so thank you subscribe follow and see you soon